Fire in the hole! And then... <laughs> you don't have to say it, dude. Get the... When you make the video? Get it from, like, Call of Duty or whatever. Fire in the hole! Yeah. What's up guys, this is Tasso from Hookagram. What's up guys, Peter from Hookagram. Gonna switch it up today. Alright, sounds good to me. People, we got plan. people love when we give them like advice rather than just reviewing one specific hookah. So this is a more general video for people to just hop in and you know get some points, pointers when you okay. buy a hookah. So we're gonna name this. Buying a hookah or purchasing a hookah 101. It sounds good to me. It's good. So pretty much we're going to go over criteria, what do you look for, kind of like point you in the right direction when you buy a hookah. Okay, I like where this is going. So let's start with, let's start with looks first, because a lot of people look for looks, which I don't think... Well, it helps that we have a business, right? Yes. We have a store. So just try to track back to the customers when they walk in. You, a lot of them ask for what looks nice. I agree with that. But as a hookah smoker, it's not the best hookah you're going to get. I agree with that as well. Just because the hookah is good looking doesn't mean it's... Exactly. Bad. But there are good looking hookahs that perform well as well. No, I agree with that. But you can go to you know a random vape shop that smoke, sells vapes, hookahs, cigars, and all that stuff. Don't tell me the AK-47. It's a shitty hookah. That's my point. How many people buy it? Because it looks cool. Yeah, no, There's I nothing cool about it, first of all. And it's horrible. So looks. When you have a, a you know, preference when it comes to hookahs, we actually a prime example right now. The flashbang that just came out yeah. is a grenade looking hookah. And the colorways and everything, the details, the writing. For me, it's a very attractive hookah. It's very, <clears throat> it's very attractive. A little bit detail on it by itself, but attractive is different ways. Like somebody would say, the Midas looks good because it's just simple and elegant. This one yeah. has too much going on. I just gave you two different opinions. Yeah. So but that's the thing. Ten million opinions out there. Well, that's the thing. So we're gonna kind of like generalize this to give you guys, you know. So we'll start with the looks. What do you look for in a hookah? Color, design. Color, design, and what it's made out of. Because you can tell that by looking at it. Agreed. So, if it's a good-looking hookah, then you gotta go to step two. Materials. Material. What do you want the hookah to be made out of? Most, 99% of the good hookahs are made out of stainless steel. Yeah, you have no problems with it, never rusts on you. No rust, easier to clean. Aluminum yep. hookahs tend to have sticky flavors that you can't get rid of. Yep, they stain. So that's important. So material is very, and not just the, the, the ingredients, the material. It's just like the threading, like you're in the field, right? Yeah, you when want to make sure you have good threads. When you Screw put it, it together, in. do you still remember when we got the Alpha X back in the day, coming from like Kalim Mamun and stuff like that? We were putting it together and we were like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. Like, perfect. So when we say material, it doesn't just say, oh, it's stainless steel, take it. No. No. It's how it's made, how it's machined. Everything. Everything is just, you know, everything is key. How it's made, every little detail, the, the hose port, the, the heart. This doesn't have a stainless steel heart. The Midas doesn't have a stainless steel heart. It's actually aluminum. Yeah. So just little but stuff. at least, like, this is protected, that's protected, they're anodized. So they have a coating on that. You don't have to worry about them rusting or staining. Good point. So that. There's one thing that I always ask you for hookahs that's very important. Don't tell me you forgot it again. The price. The price, yes. So... For me, that's the first thing that would like kind of like point you in the right bracket and category of hookahs. What are you looking to spend? Like yeah. we're trying to help you. Like you can't go buy a fifty dollar hookah that's gonna perform very well. No, but when someone comes in and says, "Oh, I want a hookah that's this, this, and this," our first question always is, well, "What do you want to spend?" Exactly. Because you can get a hookah for a hundred dollars that's made out of stainless steel, but it's gonna be boring or it's not gonna be, you know, the best pull or whatever. But with stainless steel, you can go to five hundred dollars and you get best of the best. Agreed. So that's that's what it is. It's it's more of an investment rather than you know I would rather buy one hookah that's three hundred dollars that keep buying a fifty dollar hookah over a period of the year yeah, and you're, you're gonna end up spending more money. More money. Yeah, exactly. So the price point is very important. So we're looking 
maybe let's answer this question, right? What, how much should I spend for a good hookah? Like a general thing. My, you want to know my number in my head? 250. 250 is a very good price point for a very good overall hookah. Yeah. And that's the good, right? Yeah, because you're getting, with that, you're going to get something that looks nice, which will catch people's eyes, which 98% of people care about for some days. And then it will be made out of the stainless steel or it will be anodized and you have to worry about it rusting or getting stickiness all over it and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that's important. So that's the price. So the first thing you look at is the price, then the looks. Some hookahs are cool, flashbang, some other hookahs are the motion future if you're like more of an Apple guy when you have like these cool colors and stuff like that. Yeah. That's one. Then we got the price, then we got the material, which kind of like material and quality, I would put it under the same category, right? That's the material. Then we're going into more advanced, right? I would throw in number four, the draw. The draw? I always take in the perch. There are certain hookahs, like we have certain customers that come in and they're like, I like open draw and I have X amount to spend. So for example, the Mechanica has a very open draw. Yeah. The map here has a restricted draw. So you're trying to like categorize, that's another way to like look at the category of hookahs or a medium draw or an adjustable draw. Yeah. The stimulation expansion, which is back to one of my favorites, of course. That's very important as well. What draw? Like, do you like when there's restriction or do you like when it's just wide open draw? And that's another thing. Then, accessories. Ah, oh, that's a whole different ball game. That's what the, like you go to the store, right? You come <clears> in, you're like, oh, this hookah is $200. You end up leaving spending 400 Because it doesn't come with the base or it doesn't come with the hose or it doesn't come with the hose handle. Exactly. So you always have to take into consideration that there's more stuff, especially if it's your first hookah. If you have a base already, you can just you switch can just it. change it. Yeah. Unless you're picky like we are and we don't like changing our bases out. Exactly. I hate them. We hate them. And hoses. We like having a hose for each hookah. Exactly. So, next one. What do you want the hookah for? Are you traveling? Are you the kind of person that wants to sit there and make everything look perfect for Instagram in case you can get a meet us with yep. the Caesar base, you know, like... Are you lazy and you want to make it as easy as possible? You want to get a viral one or a hoop at them? Or you're somewhere in between, which travel is us. Travel size it is. Tra no, not travel size. Well, you, yeah. But right. something in between, right? Like the tabletop. I feel like ever since the tabletops got introduced, they took over the market. I Listen, personally don't even touch the big My personal anymore. opinion is a tabletop, in my eyes, is also a travel size. Because I've traveled with tabletops and it's... Very easy. It's right in the middle. Yeah. So for me, tabletops win. Yeah, because I use it. Like I, these are nice, but it's just too small for my liking. That's a perfect size. You enjoy it more, and it's very easy to pack it through a suitcase or carry 100%. on. Hundred percent. So I think the tabletop will be the most popular lately, ever since the got introduced. A lot of Everyone's people are deceived. Them. They yeah. think that the tabletop, because it's smaller than the full size hookah, they don't smoke out well. Most of the times, they don't smoke better than the big one. Oh yeah. So don't let the size fool you guys. It was dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tabletops are taking over, man. I'm telling you, tabletops are just convenient. You can travel, you can enjoy. You don't have to clean. You don't have to put six gallons of water in your no. base. You know. And on so, top of it, when you have you know five people at your friend's house or you go to a place, I like having my hook on the table. I don't have to worry about anyone kicking it or knocking it over when they pass by somehow. It's on the table. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You get to see the people across the table. I think it's perfect. I agree. Yeah, so that's another thing. So we said price, looks, size. Size. Doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter, guys. Um, that's everything. I mean, country of manufacture. I mean, uh, there's, there's people, no. like, for example, the cars, like, think about cars, right? I drive a German car. Who, when did you ever hear somebody say, Oh, I drive a Japanese car. Like, bragging about it. You're never going to hear that, right? Talk sure about it. <laughs> 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to specify what you drive. Because if you say, oh, I drive I drive a Mitsubishi. Which one? Uh, does it sound appealing to you? No. Exactly. I drive a BMW. Yeah, you see? That, that's you got a point there. You got a point there. There's certain people that come and they're like, yo, I like German hookahs only. Or other people. I had We had customers come in. Like, I want a Russian hookah. And I'm like... How about you try to... No, I want a Russian hookah. Yeah, they're stuck on it and they don't try it. So there are customers like that. So maybe you're looking for a certain you know, country that's manufacturing. 
That's another thing. That's what you gotta look for. If you're picky like that. If you're picky, yeah. Yeah. Like we used to be picky, but since we were reviewers and we started everything, you gotta try everything. I'm not gonna say Russian is better than German or Germany is better than Russia because certain hookahs are better made in Russia, certain ones are German. Well, Russia has been behind. No, but before they got behind, when like they started making new stuff, there were certain hookahs that were really good from Germany, there were certain hookahs that were really good from Russia. It was uh, it was a big competition. Yeah, for sure. Another one that came to my head. A lot of people buy a hookah because it has a cool perch. You're smoking one right now. The Midas is not necessarily in a very appealing hookah, right? It just the perch is amazing. For me, I'll, I'll be honest. When I first got the hookah, it looked ugly. There's really nothing like you know, like there's yeah, nothing going on. Like look at this, like the Moza variety, the nice you know black stainless steel hard. The ho the ports have the matching hose and like all this little stuff. The Midas is just a stick with the heart, and I don't think it's good looking. But the perch makes the, the perch makes the it. best. So perch, you're looking for a cool perch. Now we have all these uh, German hookahs that have adjustable perch. Yep. The Moza Breeze Pro, all the, the expansion, you know. That's another thing. Maybe you have 10 hookahs and you're like, oh, I like the perch of that one. I'm going to get that one. So the perch is yeah. another one. So this is, there's no, it's not just one thing you look for when you buy a hookah. There's actually a lot of things. When you're kind of involved with the hookah game, if you're just, you know, intro, then you just take the seller's You get what you store. like, yeah. yeah. So that's it, yeah. I mean, I think we pretty much cover everything that you kind of like look into before you purchase a hookah. Well, that's one thing that, like you said, if you're someone that just smokes hookah once in a while, you're not into it like we are. Most people that do that are usually smoking, you know, $40 hookahs, and it breaks a lot on you. Yeah, 100%. We used to use those back in the day when we were 16 years old. We all did, 100%. Every two weeks, three weeks, you get a new one. And there's one last question that you got to ask before you buy a hookah. Has Hookahgram reviewed that hookah? Yes. Very important. And if you see a hookah that we haven't reviewed, let us know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can DM us, hookahgram.co on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave us a comment. Yeah. What's your favorite hookah? And any of these hookahs on the table are available at hookahgramstore.com. You can email us, text us, Instagram, FaceTime us, whatever you guys want to do. And I think we're going to cut it right here. Thank you guys for watching and have a good night.